Besa, a screenplay by Michael Maselli, based on the book by Louis Romano. Interior, moderate home, morning, 1961. A dark-haired ten-year-old boy, Gino, is sitting on the carpet playing with a ring like it's a wheel. Vroom, vroom. Around him is a forest of adults' legs. The room is filled with boisterous voices and cigarette smoke. Nobody pays attention to Gino. Finally, a handsome, well-dressed man in his prime, Carmine Maselli, squats down to address little Gino. You still have my ring, Gino? Gino perks up. It's a race car. He hands it back to Carmine, who puts it on his powerful finger. The ring is gorgeous, a uniquely cut diamond embedded in gold. This race car is cut to the exact shape of Sicily. Gino stares in amazement. You want to come to the half moon with me? Gino jumps to his feet, calls to the crowd of adults. Ma, can I go with Uncle Carmine? Exterior half moon restaurant and bar day. Gino skips with excitement, holding Carmine's hand. They follow the sidewalk to the half moon. Carmine stops as they approach the door, squats down to be eye level with Gino. Wait here. Okay. Carmine goes in, Gino stands alone. After a beat, Carmine comes out with a bar stool and a lemon ice. Squats down again, and this time seeming more serious. Gino, I want you to sit on this stool and eat this. In a little while, I'll bring you another ice. And then some pizza. But whatever <coughs> you do, don't get up from this stool. Gino nods. No matter what. Gino nods again, like a deer in headlights. Carmine smiles and gives him the ice. Tosses his hair and walks into the half moon. Exterior half moon later. Several empty lemon ice cups are piled on the ground. Gino is perched on his stool. The half moon is crowded with gangsters. There are Cadillacs and Lincolns parked up and down the block and more arrive. As gangsters enter, they rub Gino's head or pinch his cheek. Finally, Carmine comes back out with another ice. Here you go. You okay? F P. Okay. Wait here. And Carmine goes back in. Another Cadillac drives by, but this one doesn't stop. Carmine comes back out, this time handing Gino a bucket. Here, pee in this. And just like that, he's back inside. Gino stands up, turns his back to the street, and puts the bucket in front of him. He pees while watching a festive atmosphere of gangsters conversing, gambling, and eating through the front window of the restaurant. Dissolve to interior office building day present. Gino, 60, but the years have been kind, is staring out of the large conference room window of a downtown high rise. Gino. Gino doesn't know it, notice, apparently lost in thought. Gino. He snaps out of it, shifts his focus to the rest of the suits comprising a business meeting. Sorry. You gotta be somewhere? Gino checks his watch and he says, Actually, yes. Let's get this done. A renewed sense of focus. Cut to interior Russian Orthodox Church of NYC, evening. The pews are packed with well-dressed, influential New York Russians. They are silent, listening to the sermon in Russian from the right Reverend Bishop. In a corner pew sit two young men seemingly out of place. They are Joey and Vito. They watch closely as a large collection of plates can, are being passed along each pew, growing mountains of cash. Joey's eyes watch the collection plate emptied one by one into a collection block, box near the altar. Then the box is carried by two altar servers through a curtain behind the pulpit. Cut to exterior deli evening. An aproned deli owner turns his storefront sign from open to closed and begins pulling the front door shut. At the last minute, Gino scoots into the driveway. I just need a few things. Closed. Come on, man. Sorry, pal. Just as the door is about to slam closed, Gino stops it with his hand, removes a wad of large bills from his pocket. I'll even pay a late charge. Interior deli evening. A tower of fresh cold cuts, Sicilian salamis, prosciutto, mortadella, pepperoni, and cheeses eclipse the deli slicer. As deli owner continues to slice more, he isn't happy. Anything else? Yeah, I'll need a few kinds of olives too. Deli owner sighs. Uh, whoever they are, I hope they're impressed. Gino smiles in agreement, looks closely at the salami. Its concentric circles of fatty white specks fill the frame. Match cut to a black and white pixelated image with concentric circles of white specks, similar to the salami, but different. One of the specks flickers, a finger points to it. Interior, ultrasound room, evening. An ultrasound tech is pointing out landmarks on the monitor. This is the heartbeat. Looks good and strong. You want to hear it? 
She dresses Leaky and Malvana Marku. They are mid-twenties with dark Albanian features and a wealthy stylish air. Leaky holds his wife's hands as she lies on the table. Yes. Malvana watches as the tech flips a blue switch. The swishing sound of a prenatal heartbeat fills the room. The couple smile at one another. Another. Leaky kisses her head. There's the cranium. Now the shoulders, the chest, and abdomen. Everything looks normal. Would you like to know the sex? Leaky sits up straight. The moment of truth. Yes. The tech maneuvers the ultrasound probe across Balbana's belly. Balbana watches the screen with excitement. Leaky watches with intensity. Finally. It's a boy. Leaky punches his fist in the air as if he's just won an award. Yeah, baby! He kneels beside and goes to nose to nose with Balbana. Thank you. The sound of the heartbeat continues. Swish, swish, swish. Cut to swish. A tremendous pile of large bills is dumped in a collection box on a table. We are in interior rectory evening. Two Russian altar servers begin counting the money. The right Reverend Bishop enters, removing some of his garb. The room is so solemn and adorned with and Russian antiques. Beautiful sermon tonight, Father. God's words, my friend, not mine. Through the curtain slip Joey and Beetle, now wearing ski masks. In a flash, Beetle has his gun to the Reverend's head. Get on the fucking ground and your brains will be! You understand English? The Reverend, along with the other men, immediately collapsed, obliges. Yes. Yes, please don't shoot. In one move, Joey swipes the money into a garbage bag. Got it, let's move! But Beetle doesn't. He gets nice and low, presses the barrel of his gun tightly to the reverend's head. <laughs> I can fucking kill you right now. All I have to do is move my finger one inch, and you fucking dead. Come on, man, let's go! One inch, you fuck. The reverend whimpers, begins to cry. Beetle smiles, and in a flash, they bolt through the curtains. Cut to interior, Gino Rattles home, kitchen, night. Several antipasto platters blanket every service. Hundreds of cold cut slices, neatly rolled and nestled into fancy patterns. Gino is rolling the last of the salami. He finishes his masterpiece, looks on it with pride. Cut to exterior, Marco Estate, night. A luxury car with tinted windows pulls into the large gated resident. The home is a castle with security at every corner. Car parks, Leaky and Valbona step out. Interior, Marco Estate, Iller's office, night. Full bookshelves and a massive stone fireplace line the room. A painting of Skanderberg, which is staunch gaze and flowing white beard, is perched prominently on the wall. Below it, in a massive chair at a wide oak desk, sits the king of this castle, Iller Marco. He is 65, graceful and wise, but not weak. His eyes breathe fire. Three other Albanian men sit with him, as they always do. Two of the men are almost as old as he is, Pashko and Hamdi. The other is a young man in his 20s. He looks like Leaky only much more rugged. He is Yuk. Pasco, dressed like an accountant and behaving like one, has Iller's ear. Deposits of 950,000 and 1.1 million today. Excellent. Shipment? Hamdi looks like the Albanian version of Rocky, an over-the-hill tough guy. Containers coming in Elizabeth twice a week, very routine. Now Iller turns to Yuk. Yuk, how are your people on the street? Cheap and plenty of them. Good. Let's remember not to be softened by our money. We are what we are because of our strength. There is a knock on the office's heavy oak door. Iller nods, and Pasco hurries to open it. When he does, Leaky and Valbona are at the threshold. Iller braces himself for the big news. It's a boy! Iller stands up. My son! Iller embraces Leaky and kisses him on both cheeks. You've made me proud this day, just like your son will. Iller, swollen with pride, kisses Valbona on both cheeks and gazes deeply into her eyes. News bless you. I am grateful for you, for carrying this family's blood. At Iller's glance, you pours a glass of raki. If you'll honor me, we will name him after my grandfather, who died in the battle in Trapoia. Of course, babe. Good. He will be called Agron, then. Come, let's celebrate. Cut to interior Beetle's apartment at night. The place is a drug den rat hole. Joey and Beetle have just finished counting their score into a neat pile. Ten G's, baby! Fucking ten G's! Joey
Joey smiled sheepishly. You going pussy on me? What was that business with the priest? I didn't like his face. Joey seems uncomfortable. Takes out a bag of heroin. Whatever. Tonight we get fucked up for the last time, then we do what's right. Cut to exterior Gino Reynolds' home, backyard day. Gino's empty pasta platters are the centerpiece of an epic layout of foods. A raw bar with clams, fried and stuffed calamari, scumbili, ravioli, eggplant, pasta con sarde, and the party is rocking. Over a hundred guests pack the backyard, a mix of mobsters and suburban neighbors mingling. Interior, Gino Reynolds' home, kitchen, day. Gino is placing anchovies on a platter. Suddenly, the party noise from outside stops and it is silent. Gino hears and looks at, through the window, all the guests watching a limbo that has just pulled up. Its doors open and out climbs a couple of trophy wives and children scattering into the party. Then two gangsters looking like Abbott and Costello, Babu skinny and clams fat. <laughs> then the real meat gets out of the car. Carmine Maselli Sr., no longer in his prime, elderly but strong. And following him is Carmine Maselli Jr., in his prime and handsomely knowing it. As the new guests make their way into the party, everybody shakes Carmine Sr.'s hand as he passes. They scurry to find him a chair in the shade and he sits. Gino moves to the wine cabinet and removes a gorgeous bottle of red wine. Exterior, Gino Reynolds' home, backyard, day. Gino approaches Carmine Maselli Sr. and presents the wine. Gino, thanks for having us. Thank you for coming, Uncle Carmine. Uh, don't get up. But Carmine Sr. insists he gets up. You kidding? I love coming to Jersey. I've got something for you. Carmine Sr. reaches into his pocket and pulls out the Sicily-shaped diamond ring, hands it to Gino. I can't accept this. Please. My son gets the business. You get the ring. It was the only toy you ever got to play with. Gino studies it, smiles. They seemed so big when I was a kid. It still is. Gino understands. Thank you. Happy birthday. They hug. Cut to interior Marco Estate, Balbona's bedroom day. Leakey has just finished painting the name Agron on the wall in bold lettering next to an elaborate crib. Balbona has a frame braced down on the changing table. She places the black back belt background in place and folds down the metal clips to keep it in place. I hope he's a strong voice. I hope he's tall. Balbana brings the frame with her as she kisses Leaky. He's perfect. I can feel it. She lifts the frame and hangs it on the nail under the name Agua. It is the ultrasound image of the baby. Cut to exterior Sons of the Eagle Boat, Death Day, an elaborate ship like a mini cruise vessel. It floats where the Hudson River meets the Atlantic Ocean. The Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island stand nearby. Iller is finishing with Pashko, Hamdi, and Yuk. Henchmen mill about bringing food and manning the ship. Yuk is working on reeling in something big. Is it still we have a very steady flow of income from this heroin traffic? The rest is a wash. The Latins are just too streamlined with it. I think we can make more if we focus on the Middle Eastern connections to bring in more chiva. What do you think, Hamdi? It puts all our eggs in one basket, but we learn better. This isn't just about money. Once you give ground, you never get it back. Just ask the poor saps who erected those. The rest stays. Hugh pulls a 20 pound bluefish from the water and slams it onto the deck. Let's eat! Cut to exterior Gino Reynolds' home, backyard at night. A tray of sardines is almost empty. Jane and younger guests are shooting off fireworks. All the party guests watch while having dessert and coffee. Babu is finishing up a story to Carmen Jr., Carmen Sr., Clams, and Gino. So I tell them, does this place call it sauce or gravy? Because if they call it gravy, I'm not going. <laughs> they all laugh. <laughs> they used to have a guy at the half moon would say gravy and sandwich. Remember that time you brought me down there and had me sit in front all day peeing in buckets? Carmine Senior smiles as do the other men. Of course. Why? You don't know why? They all laugh again. <laughs> I must have sat out there a thousand times. Me too. <coughs> More laughing. <laughs> but why? Carmine Sr. suddenly gets really serious, leans forward. You were our bodyguards. Gino is stunned. In those days, all you needed was a kid out front. No self-respecting gangster would shoot up a place if there were kids present. 
but not anymore. These are terrible times, men. There's no honor in the young. Gina reflects on that. Where's your son? I don't know. How long now? Two years. It's not right, Gino. Gino is humiliated. It's like you said. No honor in the young. Interior. Marco is staying to Balbana's bedroom night. Balbana is in bed. Leaky has gotten up and is getting dressed. A knock and the door swings open. It's you. Let's go. You stops. Sniffs the air a few times. Ew. Did you guys just have sex in here? The couple laughs, <laughs> embarrassed. That's gross. You're all like pregnant and shit. I'll be out in a minute. I hope so, unless you decide to go for round two. He closes the door. Cut to exterior 760 Pelham Parkway night. Joey and Beetle sit in their car parked in the shadows. You trust these guys? No, they're a bunch of crazy fucks, but this dude always gets good shit, and if we're gonna turn it, it's gonna be sweet. Yeah, but 10 G's? We could probably cop and harm for half that. Yeah, and get shit, the Albanians dealing pure. If we're gonna make money, we're gonna do it right. A car pulls up across the street. Leaky and Yuke get out and enter a dark building. Joey and Beetle study them. Flashy. They always look good, but you can never tell what they're really thinking. Exterior, 760 Pelham Parkway, rooftop <clears> night. <throat> Joey and Beetle exit from the stairwell onto the gravel roof overlooking Queens. It is quiet up here. Leaky and Yuke are waiting for them. They converge and shake hands. So, where did you get the 10K? <laughs> a church donation. <laughs> they share a cool laugh. Uh, Leaky, this is Beetle. My cousin, Yuke. As they finish the handshakes... Yuke and Leaky? <laughs> Sounds like an African tribe. Beetle cracks up. Nobody else laughs. Okay. Oh, I get it. You guys are badass or something, huh? Something like that. Give us a taste. A taste? This is my friend. There's an old Albanian in Dutch. Shoku shak. Porkosi yashmi pai. Friends are friends, but the yogurt is for cash only. Tough guy. Joey, where'd you meet this Euro trash? <coughs> Watch your tongue, he can. The fuck did you call me? Beetle pulls up his shirt, revealing his gun. The rest of the men react, reaching for theirs. Whoa, Beetle, shut the fuck up! Let's get this done. Here. Joey hands Leaky the bag of money. Leaky starts thumbing through it, counting. Cut to exterior Gino Rattles' house at night. The last car pulls away. Interior, Gino Rattles' home, kitchen at night. Gino does the dishes, wraps leftovers for the fridge. Interior, Gino Reynolds home, sun's room, night. Gino flips the lights on. Baseball equipment and trophies adorn the room. He stands in the doorway. His eyes search the emptiness of the room. He sighs deeply and shuts out the light. Interior, Gino Reynolds home, bedroom, night. Gino sleeps, alone in a bed big enough for two. Cut to exterior 760 Pelham Parkway, rooftop, night. Beetle stares at Yuke. They keep their eyes locked onto one another. Move one inch, you fuck. Cool it. Leaky keeps counting. Yuke's hand squeezes the case of drugs. Beetle stares. You strong out, piece of shit. Stop! Leaky tries to count faster. Sweat teams from Joey's forehead. Yuke rubs his gun barrel with his fingertips. Make a move, tough guy. <laughs> You're all talk, pussy. And then they both make a move. Guns fire. Heroin and cash explode as bullets begin flying. Discharge flashes create a strobe effect to the fire and fight. Joey and Beetle drive behind a rooftop air conditioning unit as bullets strike it. Joey peeks out from behind and is horrified by what he sees. Leaky's body lying lifeless on the rooftop. Holy shit! Holy shit! Let's go! Yuke fires at them as they run through the stairwell. Interior, 760 Pelham Parkway, stairwell night. Joey and Beetle run down, six steps at a time. Exterior, 760 Pelham Parkway, rooftop night. Yuke walks from the door, gravel crunching beneath his feet. He kneels beside Leaky's body, Leaky's brains blown out of the back of his head. Interior, Gino Reynolds' home bedroom late night. The phone rings. Gino Ant awakens, groggily. Checks his phone, it reads, pay phone, answers it. Hello? Dad, it's me. Joey. Dad, I fucked up. What happened? I really fucked up, Dad. Interior, Gino Reynolds' home basement late night. Gino descends the steps to this unfinished, dimly lit area. He walks along a perimeter foundation wall made of cinder blocks arrives at one block that looks like all the rest, until he wiggles it loose and slides it out. The block is hollowed out, and inside it sits thousands of dollars in cash. Interior. Gino Reynolds' home, kitchen, late night. The suitcase is opened on the table, exposing clothes and toiletries. Gino adds as many canned goods as he can fit. Cut to exterior Marco estate, late night. 
Police lights flashed off the elaborate stone front from cruisers parked on the expansive driveway. Patrolmen at the front door have been greeted by Pashko. Interior, Marku Estate, Iller's bedroom, late night. A knock at the door, rousing the couple in the draped bed. What is it, Iller? I will find a rest. Interior, Marku Estate, Iller's home, late night. Pashko pours tea, hands the mugs to Iller, who in turn hands them to the police officers. Hamdi looks on. Forgive us for being unprepared for visitors. We have many dealings with police, however, not once at this hour. Your dedication is admirable, men. Mr. Marku, this is not a legal matter. We're here on behalf of the state to inform you of an incident that occurred this evening. Iller knows what this means, braces himself, sits. There was a shooting at 760 Pelham Parkway tonight. Your son, Leakey, was killed in the shooting. The life escapes Iller. He stands, turns from the men, and walks a few steps. He struggles internally, then says, Who closed his eyes and mouth? What? Who closed his eyes and mouth? Uh, I don't... Uh... In our tradition, this must be done to stop death from coming to us again. I will have to check on that. Iller looks to Handy. It wasn't done. Expect more. <clears throat> Sorry for your loss, Mr. Marcum. Iller spends time formulating his thoughts, and he is finally prepared to speak again. I want you to do your investigation. I want you to find out who did this. I don't want my son's murderers apprehended or killed. You will give me their names and turn your back. Are we in agreement? Interior, Marco Estate, Iller's bedroom, late night. Iller enters quietly. Miss Marcum paces, expecting the worst. What is it here? Fridays have always been a bad day. Tell me. What matters now is we keep Valbona safe for the sake of the little Aragon, the last of the Marcoux bloodline. As Marcoux loses all composure, collapsing into Iller, he remains strong. Interior Marcoux's estate. Valbona's bedroom late night. There's a knock at the door, no answer. The sound of puking emanates from an adjacent master bath. The bedroom door opens. Iller and Miss Marco enter. Valbona? Valbona enters from the bathroom. I don't feel good. Something's wrong. Yes, something is wrong. Iller puts his hand out. Mrs. Marco stops talking. He approaches Valbona. News, you must be strong now. What's going on? Where's Leaky? Promise me you'll be strong. Please promise me. You must have courage. We are carrying the blood of this family. And now it is Valbona's turn to lose it. No. It can't be. No. I'm so sorry, Valbona. No. Mrs. Marco embraces her, and the two women sob uncontrollably. Iller, stone-faced, watches over. As the crying reaches its crescendo, he walks into Interior Marco Estate, Valbona's bathroom, late night. Ayler shuts the door behind him, gently muffing the sobbing, but far from shutting it out. Ayler glazes at his reflection in the mirror. Strength, Ayler. Have strength for Leaky, for little Agron. He breathes deep and tries to gather himself. Then from the bedroom, thud. Ayler, call an ambulance! Interior Mark of Estate. Balbana's bedroom continuous. Iller enters to find Balbana unconscious on the floor. Cut to interior hospital room late night. Balbana slowly regains consciousness. She is hooked up to monitors and IV drips. Iller and Mrs. Marku sit beside her. You fainted. The familiar grainy gray concentric circles glow from the monitor as the tech rubs the ultrasound probe on Balbana's stomach. Is the baby okay? We are doing everything we can. The tech puts the ultrasound probe down. Is there a heartbeat? I'll get the doctor. And as she leaves the room, alone, Balbana breathes heavily, panic setting in. She picks up the ultrasound probe and presses it to her stomach. She eyes the blue audio switch on the console, slowly reaches toward it, flips it. Silence. And Balbana reaches her breaking point. Despair wells up from the deepest depth of her being. <laughs> Mrs. Marker loses it. The light has been taken from my life. Cut to exterior public school baseball field late night. 
Gino apprehensively walks the first baseline, scanning the darkness in all directions. Nothing but crickets chirping. He carries the suitcase and the weight of the world. Dad? Gino looks into the darkness. Joey emerges from under the bleachers. They converge. It looked like a clean deal, then all of a sudden it all went to shit. You using? No, I, I'm clean. We were planning on cutting it. You're clean. I swear, Dad. Gino considers this. It was Beetle. I didn't shoot him. It doesn't matter. If it's an Albanian mob like you said, you're both fucked. W what should we do? Gino thinks. Hands Joey the suitcase. Take this and hide out until I talk to Uncle Carmine. I'll let you know where I go. Don't. Hide from everybody. It's your only shot. Gino removes his cinder block cash, extends it all to Joey. You've given me so much heartache over the years, but none of it compares to right now. I'm sorry. Take care of yourself. He hugs Joey with everything he has, then kisses his cheek. Goodbye, son. Bye, Dad. Thank you. Joey starts walking across the field into the night. As he passes the pitcher's mound, he stops and turns to Gino. Remember when I, I hit a walk-off here against Pal Park? Gino nods and smiles. Joey's continues on. And then Gino says in the most quietest of breaths. Yeah. And the tear he had been fighting escapes. Cut to exterior Gino Randall's block at night. Gino drives along but stops 30 yards from his home, watches it. Branches blow and cause shadows to move along the front siding. He studies the shadows carefully. Many cars are parked along the street, windows too dark to see into. Gino thinks, then drives past his house. Cut to interior hotel lobby day. Gino stands at the front desk checking in. Cut to interior hospital corridor at night. A doctor speaking with Illa. Interior hospital room day. Illa sits next to Balbona. Nurse, you must find strength. I have nothing left. The doctors have given you pitocan to induce labor. You must push Agron's body out. She weeps uncontrollably. Dissolve to interior hospital room later. Doctors and nurses check monitors and charts. Balbana crying has her legs in birthing position. Iller holds one of her hands. Mrs. Marku holds the other. It's time to push. She does so, each push becoming a wail from her heart. Finally, the baby is out. It's out. It is quickly wrapped in blankets before it can be seen and carried toward the door. Wait. The doctors stop. Balbana is almost too weak to speak. She manages. Can I hold him? This isn't a good idea. Just once. The doctor brings the bundled baby back and hands him to Balbana. She can see the baby's face, but she can't. It takes her breath away. She expresses sorrow as animated as one can. Mrs. Marku is a mess. Iller stands over them, as strong as he can be, fighting the tears and losing. It is time for the doctor to take the baby away. Before Balbona gives it up, she hugs him one more time and kisses his face. As the doctor pulls the body from her arms, she cries out with everything she has. <laughs> Before the doctor can get through the door with the, with the body, Iller stops him. He reaches into the baby's blanket, and with his thick fingers, he holds the baby's tiny, lifeless hand. After a moment, the body is taken away, pulled from Iller's fingers. All that remains is Iller's empty hand, adorned with one massive ring, proudly displaying the Albanian image of a double-headed eagle over a red stone. This ring fills the frame. Cut to exterior East 79th Street Day. Gino pulls down the street slowly, looking for a spot. Cars are jammed in so tightly a skateboard wouldn't even fit. Suddenly, a button man steps into the street and holds out his hand for Gino to stop. He obliges. Some men scurry about, pulling two adjacent cars out and double parking them. Button Man waves Gino into the newly created huge spot. Gino pulls in, and as he does so, Button Man opens his door. Gino Rano. Yeah. Upon confirmation, two more men scoot up to Gino, flanking him like secret service. You could uh, go right up. And they escort him into the Maselli Townhouse. Interior, Maselli Townhouse foyer, day. A huge chandelier lights up the marble floor and walls. Carmine Maselli Jr. opens the door, revealing Gino and the guards. Thank you. Come in. Gino enters. They hug. I don't even remember guards and button men up and down the block. <laughs> Dad ordered extra security when I told him you were coming. Is that bad? Worse. Interior. Maselli Townhouse, living room, day. 
The area is warm, plush chairs by the fireplace, and an oak coffee table over a Persian rug. Carmine Maselli Sr. lies face down on the masseuse table in the center of the room. A gorgeous blonde female masseuse is rubbing his back. Carmine Jr. and Gino enter. Gino's here, Dad. Have a seat. I'll only be another minute. They sit. Have you seen Joey? Yeah. Last night, so I can give him some money. Yeah. How'd he look? Awful. Sorry. Carmine Sr., masseuse's finishes. All done, Mr. Maselli. He stands and puts on his robe. Gino and Carmine Jr. stand. While the masseuse folds her table, Carmine Sr. takes a wad of money from his robe pocket and gives it to her. Thank you, doll. See you tomorrow. She smiles at the younger man while she bounces off. They all watch her leave, inspecting every bit of her hot body. And what I would do to that girl if I had a prostate. <laughs> they laugh. He hugs Gino. I wish that our meeting would have had a lighter reason. Me too, it's you. Carmine looks at him deeply. You look tired, Gino. This kid is... Uh, exhausting. I thought you gave up on him. Me too. My father used to say, sangue magnetico. Blood is... Magnetic. Carmine smiles, beaming. I'm proud of you, Gino. Join us for mass. Interior police station day. Euclid sits calmly <clears throat> among a series of deadbeats in a holding cell. A cop approaches the bars. Euke Martin, your bail went through. Exterior police station day. Euke exits and heads for Iller, who is leaning on his car. They hug. I'm sorry, I say. Do you know the name of the person who did this? Yes. Cut to interior Mark of the State, Balbana's bedroom, day. Balbana lies in bed, overwhelmed with grief. A soft knock on the door. She doesn't respond. Mrs. Marku enters. She approaches the bed, cups Valbana's cheek, touches her forehead to hers. They share a tear. Then Mrs. Marku lays a sharp pair of scissors on Valbana's bed and exits the room. Valbana picks them up and brings them to a mirror. She stands in front of the mirror and holds her long hair in one hand. With the other, she uses the scissors to begin cutting it. She cuts off half of her hair with no apparent pattern or style and puts the scissors down. She puts her right hand to her right cheek digs her fingernails in deeply, and in one long motion scratches long grooves from her cheek, bone to her chin. Cut to interior Catholic cathedral day. Maselli button men guard the door and are positioned in several aisles and pews throughout the church. Carmen Sr., Jr., and Gino sit in the half-full church. They are early. A choir and organist are warming up. These Albanians are very serious people. We've worked with them for years. The man your son killed is the son of Ila Marku, the most powerful Albanian in the country, and he is ruthless. Joey didn't shoot him. It was the other kid. It won't matter to him. I want to speak with him, father and father. That's admirable of you, but I know Ila Marku. He is by the book. What does that mean? There's an ancient code that the Albanians follow, a system known as the Jakmaria. It's the most serious of all oaths. Nothing can prevent the Makus from taking back blood that was spilled. No money, no property, no sympathy can prevent the death of your son. There's got to be something. There's nothing. Gino is overwhelmed by grief. I was trying to believe that there was hope you'd have an alternative. There is no hope, Godson. Remember how it is with our own people. Sangue per sangue, como in Sicilia. Gino takes a moment to consider what that means. Look, the kid may be a piece of shit. The kid may be a failure, but sangue magnetico. Gino gets off his pew and stands, towering above Carmine Sr. He's my only child. The Randall name lives and dies with him, and so will I. The Maselli's look to one another. I will meet the other Marku, with or without you. And as he begins to storm off. Wait, Gino. Gino turns back to him. You're my godson, my nephew, my family. <coughs> we rose to power in this country because of our loyalty. That loyalty that you give to your son, 
that same loyalty that we give to you. We will meet Ilomaku together. Carmine Jr. holds out his hand and Gino shakes it. As they shake, Carmine Sr. claps their hands in his. Cut to interior Marco State, Balbano's bedroom, day, a black dress. Balbano turns it inside out, begins putting it on that way. Interior, Marco Estate, Iller's bedroom, day. Iller ties his leather dress shoes. Mrs. Marco turns her dress inside out. Interior, hearse, day. Iller, Mrs. Marco, and Balbana sit in silence. They stare straight forward, holding it all together. Exterior, Valhalla Cemetery, day. Outside the cemetery, a procession of sedans leads two black hearses and another procession of sedans. Police motorcycles protect the procession. Hundreds of black-suited men and black-veiled women line the area. The hearses head to the main entrance of the cemetery. Ilo Marku and three other male members of the Marku family carry a large black coffin toward the burial site. Yuk Marku and three other males of the Markus carry the little coffin of Agron to the site. They walk up to the two tombstones, lead up next to each other, and from there the funeral personnel take charge of the burial as prayers are offered by a priest. Iller watches Terry eye his wife next to him. On either side stays Hamdi, Pashko, and Yuk in front of the tremendous crowd. The priest finishes the ceremony and they begin to throw dirt on the coffins until they are, exterior of Alhalla Cemetery, minutes later, completely buried. Flowers, each site. As the grief reaches its crescendo, Iller, strong and stout, walks to the center of two tombs facing everyone. The unjust blood that was spilled and the death of these two clan members will be avenged. The Jackmaria will continue. We will not rest until the murderers are brought to justice. We swear it upon our honor, upon our Beza. <coughs> Cut to exterior Gino Reynolds block day. Gino drives slowly toward his house. The windows are broken, the door is kicked in. Albanian graffiti is sprayed prominently. He sighs, drives away. Cut to interior, Marco Estate, Iller's office, evening. Iller is sitting at his desk, staring deeply at Leakey and Balbano's wedding photo while he addresses Hamdi. I will carry the weight of this with every step that remains to be taken before I die. The Messiaries want to meet. To be expected. Have them here. The Italians, the police, the Americans, will all want us to forego the Jack Maria. It is not condoned in this country. Illo thinks before saying, We're not in this country. Interior, Marco Estate, Balbana's bedroom night. Balbana is lying in bed, seemingly catatonic. Yuk knocks softly, enters. Balbana? She doesn't respond. He sits next to the bed. Wish to God that that bullet had struck me. Wish I could have saved you from this sorrow. He places his hand in hers. She looks at it for a beat, then to him. Her eyes grow dark. Avenge my husband and my son. And let me be a part of it. Yuke smirks. I knew there was venom in you. I want to watch it happen. I want to see the life leave him. He lays an assuring hand on her. Your fury is my fury. Exterior, mark your state day. A limousine pulls through the gates and parks. Albanian henchmen approach it and open the door. Out steps Carmine, Junior, Senior, and Gino. They take in the sheer magnitude of the Marco Estate. Interior, Marco Estate, Scattenburg Room, Day. Hamdi and Pasco sit with Carmine, Junior, Senior, and Gino. Iller enters the room. Mr. Marco. Mr. Maselli. They embrace. It has been too long since we have broken bread. We have brunch prepared for you. Thank you. This is my son, Carmine Jr. Ailer <coughs> shakes Carmine Jr.'s hand. Why, you were just a little boy the last time I saw you, sitting out front during many meetings. <laughs> <laughs> they laugh. They grow up so fast. And that reminds him of the fate of his own son. In an instant, his smile is gone, and grief has overstricken him. This is awkward for all the men. He shakes it off, stands up straight. My apologies. I am still learning how to cope with this tragedy. We can come back another time if you prefer. A true gentleman. Your father has prepared you well. Iller smiles to Carmen Sr. 
A delay is not necessary. This is Gino Rano, father of Joey Rano. Uh, Mr. Marco, thank you for seeing us today. We all share in your grief and hope that God gives you and your family strength. Iller approaches Gino and embraces him tightly. I am saddened by the reason for today's visit. I know this must be difficult for all of you, especially you, Mr. Rano. Thank you for your kind words. My home is yours. This is Pashko, my advisor, Hamdi, my associate, and this is my nephew, Yuk. He was present at the shooting on Saturday night. Some handshakes. You shot at my son? Your son shot at me. Semantics, gentlemen. This is a sensitive topic. Let's keep it above the belt. With all due respect, Mr. Maku. Of course. Let's eat. Exterior, Marco Estate, Garden Day. A quaint patio and wrought iron furniture surrounded by dense but rare and beautiful flowers. They eat and drink as they talk. We presented the package, they presented the cash. Your son's body flipped, he was a tweaker. Opened fire and we responded. My son says he didn't shoot Leaky. There was the other boy. They were both shooting frantically. Both are guilty. My son has been troubled. Drugs have clouded his judgment. We have a saying in Albanian. Sometimes for one flea, you have to burn the whole blanket. This doesn't sit well with Gino. What occurred Saturday was a tragedy <coughs> without parallel. We want you to know that this was not a hit or a move from our family against yours. Your word is trusted here. We are concerned about possible retribution on your family's behalf. What are you asking? Uh, we're asking what happens now. This boy, Joey, and his friend, Beetle, will be killed. And it will be gruesome and very public. We will see to that. Mr. Mark, Gino is here to work out an alternative. He is prepared to offer your family a very large sum of money in restitution in the hopes that you may reconsider your decision. Iller cuts him off with a wave of the hand. Jack Mario cannot be bought. This is a waste of your time. I understand your tradition, Mr. Marco, and I certainly respect it. But I love Joey with the same intensity you loved your son. I'm here to make amends at any cost. Amends will be made when your son's heart no longer beats. We are prepared to add a sizable sum to your gift as well, so that this boy might be saved. For the first time in 50 years, Carmine, you have insulted me. The boy lives, Ila. I suggest you take this gift. All the men set up straighter as attention mounts. I feel our friendship is being tested now. According to canon, every male member of the Rano family can be killed to avenge our blood, including yourself, Mr. Rano. In response to this insolence, I will no longer be overlooking that part of our laws, as well as to those who protect the Rano's. We will not lay down for you. We come from a culture of war and will not hesitate to bring that to your doorstep. You want a war? Yuk rises and pulls a gun from his belt. The others stand. Iller and Carmine Sr. do not. Iller gives Yuk a death look. Yuk, put that away! He obliges. The others remain standing. My apologies, the young one. Carmine Sr. nods in understanding. Carmine, I'm sorry it has to end this way for us. Is there any other way? My family will be avenged, Mr. Rano. There is no way to stop it. Our beza, our code of honor, is what holds us to our conviction. Carmine Jr. and Gino stare at Hamdi, Pashko, and Yuke. It is like two football teams squaring off on the sidelines before kickoff. Gentlemen, please. I've been a poor host. Let's have some food and drink some homemade raki. You have heard our position. Carmine Sr. stands up. This truce is over. He extends his hand to shake Ehlers. Good luck to you, old friend. They shake. 
to you as well. May there be something left in the end. Cut to interior of a Selly townhouse day. Button men are loading weapons by the dozen. The windows are being fortified with bulletproof glass. Bomb making materials are laid out and being assembled. A wartime base camp. Cut to Maku Estate Day. Knives, guns, and bulletproof vests are being inventoried and distributed by Hamdi and Pashko. Interior, Queen's Landfill Night. Joey and Beale are tying off and mainlining heroin. Cut to Interior Maselli Townhouse Dining Room Day. Carmine Jr. and Sr. are sitting at the dining room table with Babu and Clams, Abbott and Costello. They are planning. Gino enters from the bedroom, joins them. Sorry, boss, I can't come to work. I gotta be part of a mob war. Gino doesn't laugh. My life is slipping to shit quickly. It's never too late for a career change. Sangue magnetico. This war is proof of that. How do we protect Joey? The safest bet is to stay alone out there and <coughs> just keep moving. We need to make things so inconvenient for the Marcus that they have no choice but to call a truce. How? Carmine. And that is Carmine Jr.'s cue to take over. The purpose of a war is to interrupt cash flow. In the movies, it's about bullets flying, but this isn't the Wild West. From this point forward, the Marcus need to lose money every day. We will send a tremendous message tomorrow. And you can bet the Marcus will be after our construction sites. I'll have the police beef up security, but we can bank on falling behind on some of those. But remember, ultimately, it's about blood for the Marcus. So everybody wants your ass. Cut to Interior Marku Estate, Iller's office night. Iller has a me meeting with Yuke, Hamdi, and Pashko. This Rano boy and his friend are addicts. Every distributor on the street needs to know that they are marked by us. They'll turn up sooner than later. I can get the word to a lot of these uh, low-level guys, but once we find out who the supplier is, we'll, we'll have to uh, buy these kids from him. You know that's not a problem. Have your people put out the word that those who cooperate will be compensated generously, especially in the black neighborhoods. They should be smart enough to know that's their safest play. What about the Miscelli family? They will scramble to protect their labor union contracts. Well, they protect those little pieces. We will strike harder and bigger, shocking the foundation that holds them together. How? We have a safety valve that we put into place years ago, the last time we rubbed shoulders with the Italians. Yuke, it's time we used it. Looking forward to it. How does they move against us? They will come after some of our legitimate fronts first. Italians love burning shit down. Right. It'll probably come at night in the form of arson on one of our establishments. Pasco, make where our insurance deal details are up to date. We will need them. Interior. Sally's townhouse kitchen night. Clams has three cell phones taken apart on the counter. Babu's mixing chemicals. Like a cooking show host, he explains to Gino. You'll mix the RDX with the binder and the plasticizer. Looks like pound cake. Yeah, but this helps you lose weight. They spark. Then you pour in a little motor oil and voila, C4. Just gotta let it dry. The detonators are actually the hard part. They're not hard if you know what you're doing. And now Gino's attention is on clamps. You just gotta find the vibrator. It's the little thing that spins inside when your phone rings. He points to a cylindrical piece on one of the deeper layers of the phone. And you just cut a hole under it. He uses snips to do this. And you put back the phone together and attach it to a small board. He picks up one that is already assembled and uses it to illustrate his directions. See? Put screws here and here. Attach crocodile clips here, here, and here. Attach four AA batteries, loop a wire around these screws, and back the vibrator. Leave the circuit open, and when the phone rings, the circuit will create a spark. Watch. He calls the phone. A spark jumps across the open circuit. And BAM! Pound cake everywhere! Cut to interior pizzeria day. A Latin guy rolls out dough and begins throwing it up and spinning it. He lays it on the counter. It is circular. Match cut to interior laundromat day. 
the circular door of a front loading dryer. A poor woman pops the door open and loads in her laundry, starts counting chains while her four kids play. She slams the circular dryer door close. Match cut to interior parking garage day. The circular wheel cover of a BMW pulling in. The garage attendant hops out from the booth to take the keys. He jumps in the car and pulls away. The circular wheel cover spinning. Match cut to exterior rooftop day. The circular lens of a pair of binoculars. They are pulled away to reveal Gino, leaning against the corner ledge and looking up and down several city blocks. He turns and looks down another block, raising the circular binocular lens. Match cut to exterior Washington Heights Park day. The circular head of the spoon. A pinch of heroin is dumped onto it. What are you doing? Joey and Beetle are sampling from three Spanish dealers. Just a taste, bro. The heroin begins cooking up on a circular spoon. Match cut to interior Maselli townhouse day. The masseuse kneads the flesh of Carmine Maselli Sr.'s back into a circular motion. You are tight today, Mr. Maselli. The result of difficult decisions. Interior pizzeria day. The Spanish guy finishes sprinkling cheese onto the pizza, puts it into the oven. Interior, laundromat day. The poor lady opens another machine and begins holding her whites. Interior, parking garage, day. The parking attendant comes up the stairwell and hangs the BMW keys on a numbered hook. Exterior, rooftop, day. Gino watches the white stand turn the corner and head in the direction of the parking garage. He's breathing heavily, nervously. Exterior, Washington Heights Park, day. Joey and Beetle are enjoying their high. This is dirty shit, but it's good enough. The three dealers eye each other suspiciously. Interior, Maselli Townhouse Day. The masseuse supplies oil and deeply rubs Carmine's upper back and shoulders. Interior, Pizzeria Day. The Spanish guy takes the pie out of the oven and cuts it into eight slices. From a booth nearby, Clams is finishing his soda and watching the Spanish guy. Interior, Laundromat Day. As the poor kids play, they run among the machines like it's a maze. They pass a bench. On it is sitting the only other patron, Babu, with a laundry bag sitting next to him. Interior, parking garage, day. The white sedan pulls in. Carmine Jr. steps out, hands the keys to the attendant. Exterior, rooftop, day. Gino uses his binoculars to see a magnified image of the pizzeria, laundromat, and parking garage, all in different directions. His breathing is becoming more frantic. Exterior, Washington Heights Park, day. Two of the dealers wander behind Joey and Beetle. We only have enough for two bags. Shit. You guys are worth more dead than you are alive. He laughs. They laugh nervously. Suddenly, the other two dealers slip piano wire around Joey and Beetle's necks and yank. Before it is taut, Joey reacts quickly and lifts the spoon to his neck, the only thing preventing him from being totally strangled. The dealers pull tightly. The boys' eyes bulge as they are dragged behind some dumpsters. Interior of Miselli Townhouse Day. The masseuse works his hands down Carmine's lower back. Interior pizzeria, day. The Spanish guy is on his cell phone. Clams checks his watch. Only one other patron in the place, and Clams watches him leave, then gets up and approaches the counter. Buddy, hang up the phone for a minute. I want to give you a tip. Best tip you'll ever get in your whole life. Mommy, let me call you back, okay? What's up, my man? What do I owe you for the slice and soda? Three fifty. Clams gives him a fifty dollar bill. Listen to me, okay? Forget my face, or you're a dead man. I have no problem with you, my problem is with your bosses, the owners of this Italian, Albanian, Spanish pizzeria. Follow me out of the store. Lock the front door, I'm going to go left, you're going to go right. Do you understand me? Yes. Interior, laundromat day. The poor <coughs> lady is holding a wad of hundreds. I don't understand. You don't have to. Just take your kids and get out of here. Buy them all new clothes, buy a washer and dryer. Just get them far away from here. He ushers them out of the place. Interior parking garage day. Carmine Jr. approaches the garage attendant. I need to talk to you about the car you just parked, about the trunk. Interior, Maselli Townhouse day. The masseuse finishes Carmine's back. Okay, let's do your legs. She squeezes the oil onto them, then walks over to her bag and drops the bottle in. She texts to see if Carmine is watching her. He's not. Quickly and quietly, she unlocks the window nearby, then crosses the room and sneaks out the front door. Carmine, with his head down, doesn't notice. The unlocked window silently swings open. In walks Yuk. Yuk holds a tremendous knife, its blade gleaming. He moves silently th through the room toward Carmine Sr. Exterior Washington Heights Park, day. Blood explodes from Beetle's neck as the wire cuts through his flesh. Joey, continues struggling, uses the spoon to keep his trachea clear. He gets his head under the wire and bends, flipping the dealer over his head. 
Exterior, rooftop, day. Gino is trying to control his breathing, but his composure is getting away from him. Through his binocular, he sees clams walking from the pizzeria. The Spanish guy locks up the pizzeria door and runs. The poor family eagerly walks down another block, counting their money. Babu pulling the laundromat door shut and pulling a garbage can in front of the door. Then he runs. From the parking garage, the attendant sprints along with two other attendants. Finally, Carmine Jr. runs out too. Gino lowers the binoculars, sits behind the cover of the ledge, holds a cell phone in his hands. He is sweating profusely, almost hyperventilating. His hands shake uncontrollably. He finally presses send. Exterior pizzeria day. Boom. Exterior laundromat day. Boom. Exterior parking garage day. Boom. Exterior Washington Heights Park day. Bang, bang, bang. The dealers have opened fire on Joey as he runs between dumpsters and jumps from a rocky cliff. He climbs 50 feet down to the Hudson River below, hitting the water with a loud splash. Cut to exterior random building day. Bang. Stairwell door flies open and Gino comes running out. Smoke is everywhere. Sirens blare in all directions and Gino joins the crowd. He runs like a scared bystander. Cut to interior Maselli townhouse, sitting room day. News footage of the explosion play on a wall hung TV. Carmine Maselli Jr., Gino, Clams, and Babu enter just in time to see the news report. And now police are saying they suspect the bombings to be an act of organized crime and not terrorism due to the fact that all three businesses are owned by Ilir Marku, Albanian business tycoon and alleged mob kingpin. An image of Ilir is displayed on half of the screen while the other half continues showing the wreckage. There are literally dozens of other businesses in the Midtown area either owned or operated by Marku and police are urging consumers to take caution and be aware of these companies. For a complete list, log on to TBN.com or call your local precinct. Carmine smiles. Dad, you gotta see this. No answer. Dad? Interior, Maselli Townhouse, living room, day. Gino, Clams, Babu, and Carmine Jr. enter cautiously. The massage table, covered in blood, sits empty in the center of the room. Bloody footprints lead to the window. Bloody handprints on the frame. Clams rushes to the window and opens it. Nothing out there. A trail of blood leads to the kitchen. Signs of a struggle, they follow it. Interior, Maselli Townhouse, kitchen, day. Carmine Sr.'s body lies collapsed in the spot where the struggle ended. His torso is mutilated, blood everywhere. The men enter and gaze at the horrific scene. The double-headed eagle has been cruelly drawn on the wall in Carmine Sr.'s blood. Oh, Christ! They stare in disbelief. It's too much for Gino, he throws up. Cut to interior, Marco estate, Balbana's bedroom night. Balbana is in bed sleeping. Hugh gently wakes her. Balbana? Balbana awakens groggily. You said you wanted to see. She's still a little out of it. Hugh turns his phone toward her. Ooh. A photo of Carmine Sr.'s bloody corpse glows at Balbana, focuses on it deeply. Who is this? One of the Italians is protecting the murderers of your family. She smiles. I want more. Come with me. Interior, Marco estate, basement night. On a slab lies the body of Beetle. Iller, Pashku, and Hamdi are standing over it. A branding iron is simmering in the fires of an incinerator. Mutilate his face. Leave him naked in Central Park tonight. You and Balbana enter. Iller sees. It is inappropriate for you to be here. I need this, Iller. <sighs> so be it. Balbana approaches the body, stands over it, and spits in its face, and Hugh, brandishing the iron from the incinerator, burns the image into the body's torso. Hiss. He lifts the iron, revealing the image, a double-headed eagle. Hugh turns to Balbana. The Jack Maria has begun. You have my word, my Besa, that it will be seen all the way through. Exterior. Italian funeral home, day. The area is filled with black sedans, SUVs, and other luxury cars. Police line the streets, and barricades prevent some from entering the street. Flowers are offered upon the doorstep of the funeral home by pages of those who can't make it. Interior, Italian funeral home, day. Carmine Maselli Sr. lies peacefully in an open casket surrounded by bouquets. Gino stands in a side aisle. Carmine Jr. stands at a podium addressing the crowd. I recently learned the Albanian term Jack Maria, which means blood-taking. That's what this was, and it reminds me of another term, a Sicilian term, la vendetta, the vengeance. It's time for the Albanians to learn this term. The crowd hoots in agreement like a Baptist church. My father lived by a code, a code that doesn't seem to be honored much in this world anymore. 
but those of you in attendance today understand it and respect it. My father lived by it and my father died by it. To all of you affected by the murderous death of Carmine Maselli Sr., I make you a promise. Although he speaks to everyone, he appears to be addressing Gino only. His death was worth the cause. And in his final moment, I know he knew that. Gino struggles with this emotional gut punch. Cut to interior Marco Estate, Iller's office day. Iller is, is at his desk. You enters. The kid's not at the funeral. I know. What will we do? Nothing. Let them pay their respects. You are soft, uncle. Compassion is not soft. You can't sit here when I know where the boy's father is. How can you? On the blood of your son and grandson? We make careful moves, Yuke. Shooting up a funeral home is not precise. It's the type of behavior that Italians were doing and why the police stopped letting them be. Carmine and Sully's son will swear vendetta. When Jack Maria and Vendetta meet, skies will be poisoned with blood. I don't think you are preparing for what it will take to win this. You are young, Euchre. To sit in this chair is to attend many funerals. Let them pay their respects. And when we are certain of Joey Rano's whereabouts, I will turn you loose. Cut to Exterior Valhalla Cemetery Day. Valbonna carries a quilt, a receiving blanket, and a pacifier. She approaches the large tombstone of her husband and the tiny one of her son. She lays the gifts on them, touches the scratches on her face. Exterior, Harlem Street, night. A group of black thugs is talking. Joey, disheveled and jonesing, approaches. The thugs seize him up. Yo, you're on the wrong block, nigga. Joey points to a thug who is his back turned, counting money. Hey, Jerome! Jerome turns and sees Joey. Hey, the Italian scallion. This is one of my new customers, boys. Treat this man with respect. He's gonna make our asses rich. What you need, homie? Two. Jerome puts his arm around Joey, leads him into a dark alley. Right this way, my brother. Exterior, Harlem, dead end, night. They come through the alley on a dingier block. We're not going to the den? The den's for crackhead niggas. This is where I deal with preferred customers. Jerome gestures for the money. Joey gives it. They approach a black SUV with darkened windows. Jerome knocks on the glass. As the window starts to roll down, Jerome suddenly grabs Joey. The window continues down to reveal Yuke. Joey struggles to break free. He flails his legs, convulses his body. Yuke and Hamdi jump out of the car, guns drawn. Get him in the back! Joey frees one hand and pulls his gun from his waistband, holds it right next to his ear, and fires it backwards into Jerome's face. The blood explodes all over him and Jerome drops. Joey darts into the dark alley as Hamdi and Yuke begin firing, hitting the walls around him. Exterior, Harlem Street, continuous. Joey emerges from the alley amidst the gunfire covered in blood. The pack of thugs is already pulling their guns. They fire. Joey dives behind a row of cars. Hamdi's SUV pulls onto the street. Yuke fires from the open window. The thugs turn and fire at Yuke. Complete chaos. Joey darts across the street and into another alley. Exterior, another Harlem Street, continuous. Joey emerges and fires his gun back into the alley to thwart any followers. Hamdi's car turns the corner. Yuke fires. Joey fires back, then flees down the steps of a nearby subway tunnel. Interior subway tunnel continues. Joey descends to the platform just as the train is about to pull away. He jumps on just in time. Cut to exterior Maselli Townhouse night. A moving truck is parked in front of the building and movers are loading it. Button men are guarding. They watch up and down the street. One of them is staring at the cars parked across the street. A shadow passes between two cars. He looks harder at the next space. A shadow goes by. He draws his gun. He motions to the car. They converge on it, guns drawn. Interior, Maselli Townhouse, living room, evening. The place is virtually empty. Any remaining items are boxed up. Carmine Jr. stands over the blood stain on the carpet, squats down, and touches it. Gino appears from a bedroom in the background. Gino is listening to his voicemail on his cell phone. Gino, I hate to do this to you over the phone, but we have to let you go. This leave of yours just came at a bad time. Not to mention the seedy characters that you've been milling around asking about you. Gino hangs up. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. He was enemies with Ilya Marku since before I was even born. He knew the peace was temporary. He's dead because of my son's actions. Your son's actions were caused by the Marcus. My son was dead already. 
I mourned him for two years ago when I threw him out. And it broke my dad's heart. He was proud when you decided to stand up for Joey to fight for him. They hug. I'm holding a meeting tomorrow. I want you to be there as my advisor. Carmine, I avoided being part of this life for so long. I'm almost collecting social security and you're asking me to jump in with both feet? You're already in. I'm just asking you to swim. Do you know it sets the reality? That other life of yours is dead. You heard it. There's a knock on the door. Carmine draws his gun. Who is it? It's Greco. Carmine Jr. opens the door cautiously. Standing there is a button man and Joey, bloodied and disheveled. Joey! Gino rushes to the door. Joey collapses into his arms. Found him sneaking up to the place. What happened? They're everywhere out there. I, I can't make it on my own anymore. Gino hugs him tighter than ever you thought was possible. We'll protect you, son. But I think it's time we got the whole story. Cut to exterior 760 Pelham Parkway, rooftop day. Joey's walking through the fateful night with Gino and Carmine Jr. I was standing here, Beetle was here, uh, Yuke and Leaky were here and here. These two were starting shit when, when me and Leaky were trying to deal. When they started shooting, I ran back this way and, and fired like this. No way I could have hit him in the left temple. Unless he turned his head. Which a lot of people do in a gunfight. It's, in, it's instinctual. I didn't shoot him, I swear. What were you firing? This. He removes his gun. A forty-five. Is that what Beetle had too? No, he carried a, a nine millimeter. Well then that's it. We need to see the police report and find out the caliber bullet that killed him. If it's a forty-five, it was Beetle and Joey's off the hook. Can we get that? Yeah, it'll cost a few bucks and take a few days, but I'll get a guy inside to send it. Interior, Marco Estate, Garden Day. Yuke is having brunch with Balbona. For the first time since the tragedy, she looks put together and pretty. My bullets were so close, Balbona. I'm glad you missed. We had a deal. Please don't deny me the satisfaction of watching that boy die. I will try not to let my own fire cloud my judgment. But I don't want to risk him getting away again. He can't run forever, you. We'll get him. This place has missed your light these past few weeks. She smiles a faint smile. You look pretty. Interior, Marku Estate, Iller's office day. From his office window, Iller is watching Yuke and Balbona's brunch. He addresses Hamdi and Pashko, who are sitting near his desk but continues watching Malwana. She should still be mourning. She is. Look at the scratches on her cheek, her hair. Her clothes are turned inside out. It's the 21st century, Hila. Let her be a young woman. My son has been gone but a blink, and her heart is already searching. They are bound in Jagmar. That is the meaning of their bond. And that is why she will love him. Hila turns to the men. Where the sword is, is the faith. Interior, Delhi back room, day. Stored canned goods, oils and vinegars line the room. Carmine Jr. and Gino sit at a table as Carmine Jr. speaks to the other four dons of the five families. They are dons Ducesi, Bonanno, Genovesi, and Colombo, all in their late 60s. Carmine Jr. raises his glass. Before we proceed, I'd like to toast to my late father. The dons raise their glasses and say, salute. I asked for a sit-down because of one thing and one thing only. Now, you all know about our Albanian headache, but there's more to it. I'm proposing we deal with this situation together, not only for this Rano kid, but for ourselves. For years, our good earners in construction, gambling, prostitution, dope, and now the union are turning to shit one by one. We've become pushovers to the blacks, the Russians, <coughs> the Chinese, and now the Albanians. We got the feds nailing us for farting in our cars. The capos are whining like a bunch of Girl Scouts because they don't get enough Thin Mints in their shipments. Are you asking that we join your war? No. I am asking that you recognize that this is your war too. And yours, and yours, and yours, and yours. We are not respected. This is personal for you, comrade. This is personal for all of us. This is a war that has been waged in our city while we've been sleeping. I'm asking you to wake up before we've lost. Joey Rano's father sits with us at this table. If we don't win, any one of us can be in his position next. 
There was a time when Sicilians were so powerful, the busboys in the lounges were untouchable. Now our kids and our fathers are being taken out by these ungrateful pieces of shit. No fear, no respect. The Albanians have muscled into our affairs over the past 30 years. We let this happen because we became weak. My father always said, Su fa assai e non ciabara, spene assai e non cogibiara. If you put a lot into something but don't maintain it, you will not have enough of a harvest to receive. It is time to maintain. Lucchesi stands up and nods. They're right. We was here first. Forget the Irish, they don't count. These Albanian fucks need to be clipped so they know we ain't losing money to them no more. And the rest of these hard-ons will take notice. Mark my words. If we don't join this fight now, we'll be having nothing to leave our own kids. Lucchesi sits down. Carmine turns to Gino. You're right. Gino removes it, places it in Carmine Jr.'s hand. Carmine Jr. holds the ring out as he speaks, using it to represent what he says. I am betting the future of our way of life on this boy. We draw the line now, here, this moment. He lives. Carmine Jr. places Gino's ring in the center of the table. Now who's with me? After a beat of reflective silence, each doll removes his ring and places it in Gino's on the table. Thank you, gentlemen. My father is smiling right now. We'll need a place to hide this kid. My, my casino in Atlantic City. I will offer up the penthouse and the casino bel air. Is it safe? Hundreds of security personnel. Thousands of potential witnesses. It's a virtual fortress. The Marcus would be crazy to make a, a move. If they even knew he was down there. Right. So our safest play? Exterior Atlantic City coastline establishing shot day. A line of casinos towering above the ocean. Exterior Casino Bel Air day. A series of limos pull up. The Maselli's, Rattles, and other dogs get out and head for the Bel Air's main entrance. Interior Casino Bel Air suite living room day. The door opens and Gino, Joey, and Carmine enter. Perfect. Glad you like it. Now stay in here. Don't go out. We're going to get you set up. We'll be back in a while. If you're hungry, order for room service. And they leave Joey alone. Cut to exterior market estate, courtyard day. Yuka dumping garbage cans into the main dumpster. Illa approaches. The Hulk can do this. Why, oh, it was overflowing. From this spot, there's a clear view of Albana's room window. She waves at them. Illa now understands why Yuke is there. He looks at Yuke's garbage and sees a bottle marked Endosulfan, pesticide. Pesticide? Balbona and I have been spending a lot of time in the garden shitting like bugs. Don't you think you're spending too much time with her? I understand why, from your point of view, this can be upsetting. Illa lays his hands on Yuke. At least wait until we have fulfilled the Jack Maria. Of course, on my basis. Cut to interior, interior Casino Bel Air, sweet living room today. <clears throat> Joey is pacing, sweaty, fidgety. Cut to interior Casino Bel Air, security room day. Gino and Carmine Jr. observe a wall with dozens of monitors, each displaying different camera angles. These show the parking decks, the, uh, these all hotel corridors. You've got uh, east entrance, west entrance, boardwalk, loading dock, casino floor. Eyes everywhere. Yep. We'll be watching round the clock. Joey will be safe here, as long as he stays in the suite. Cut to exterior Atlantic City boardwalk day. It is cold. The boardwalk is desolate except for the typical riffraff. Joey, partially disguised in a hoodie, approaches random dirt bags. You holding? No, man. A fat dirt bag begs Pearson from nearby. You looking, boy? Joey makes a beeline for him. What do you got? These would be some goma, some brown. Uh, deck of brown. Fifteen. Joey takes out the cash, hands it over for the drugs. During the exchange, Biggs gets a good look at Joey's face. Seems to recognize him, but plays it cool. Once the deal is done, Joey turns and walks away. Big eyes watch Joey as he turns and enters the Casino Bel Air. Cut to interior Marquee Estate Day. The ultrasound image of Agron framed and hanging above the crib. 
Babana is trying to take it down, but her emotions won't let her. I can't. It's an un unhealthy reminder about one. I can't do it. You must. She struggles, then finally musters the strength to lift the featherweight frame one inch off the nail it hangs on. She holds it, like Atlas holding up the world. She places it as gently as possible in the crib, then holds her stomach and cries. Yuke's phone rings. He answers it. Cut to exterior Atlantic City boardwalk day. Yo. Biggs speaks into his phone. Yo, Chris Biggs. Hope you got some green, because I found a rabbit. Cut to interior Marco Estate, Iller's office day. Iller is at his desk. Yuke bursts in, Balbana in tow. Atlantic City, Casino Bel Air. He's there right now. Colombo's place. Marcelli got the Italians together. In that case, we may have strengthened them. This will cost more money than we thought. Money? I thought this was about blood. We have an empire that must be sustainable after these ventures. As this argument heats up, Iller quietly listens to all parties. An empire built out of strength, not just money. There are years of deals to think about, Iller. And a deadened family tree. This is bad for our business. Yep, Maria supersedes business. Iller has made his decision. He stands. And our Beza supersedes everything. The boy dies. Yuke and Balbana smile. Iller puts his hand on Yuke's shoulder. My nephew, lead us in this vengeance. Exterior, Marku Estate Day. A dozen Albanian men are loading countless <coughs> machine guns and ammo into a black van. At least, at least 50 more Albanian men are putting on bulletproof vests and loading into a line of 20 black SUVs. Yuke leads the way. Cut to interior, sons of the eagle boat, cabin, day. Iller and Balbana sit at a table on the elegant boat. They are full steam ahead, hugging the New Jersey coastline. When this is over and my <coughs> husband and son have been mourned and avenged, with your permission, I will be spending more time with you. They can see you standing on the boat deck, holding his gun and staring ahead into the ocean with intensity. When the time is right, Balbona. My son loved you in a way that made me prouder than I ever thought I could feel. You are welcome to live in this compound as part of this family. I would never turn my back on you. He reminds me of Leaky. Me too, when he is quiet. <laughs> Exterior, Garden State Parkway, day. Twenty black SUVs in a straight line speed south, one after the other. Vroom, 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 vroom. Interior, Casino Bel Air, Penthouse Living Room, night. A suite overlooking the ocean. Joey draws his heroin into a syringe, ties off, but before he can inject, the door opens and Gino and Carmen enter, flipping the lights on. Joey scrambles to hide the evidence, but there's too much. What is this? Gino grabs him by the arm. Carmen watches. You told me you were clean. Gino slaps him hard across the place. You got us all laying our lives on the line and you're compromising our position with this shit! Joey squirms, speechless. Where did you get this? Today. When? This afternoon, on the boardwalk. What is wrong with you?! Gino punches him. Joey cowers. Gino punches over and over again. What the fuck is wrong with you, you deadbeat, you fucking bum! Carmine lunges at Gino to pull him off, but cannot. Gino's emotions have boiled over. He's crying as he swings. Gino! You've cost me everything. You broke your mother's heart! More punches. Gino, don't do this. You bring me nothing but pain. We should have let him have you. He finally gets weak enough for Carmine to pull him off. They fall to the floor. Joey picks up his syringe and tourniquet and heads for the back bedroom. The men remain on the floor. He's killing me. He's sick. What do we do now? Unless he got the shit from a blind guy, we need to assume our cover's blown. Get the guys together. Cut to interior sons of the Eagle boat. Boat deck at night. The boat is anchored 200 yards off the Atlantic City coastline. Brilliantly lit casinos aligned with the boardwalk. Iller speaks on a cell phone. Bob Honda sits next near him. If the Marcus were tipped off, they would scramble for an hour, then make the three-hour trip here. I would say we have four hours from the time of the deal to evacuate safely. The deal was this afternoon. If he knows we're here, then he knows we've teamed up with Colombo, and we'll assume the other families as well. So they will come here prepared for World War III. They'll surround the building. Carmine and Gino approach the window and look down to the boardwalk 20 stories below. There are a few dozen people sitting on benches and standing around. There's a lot more people than usual down there. Way too cold to be just soaking up the scenery. Gino points at the boat, sitting off the coast. Could be anything. 
Suddenly, a metallic glare from reflected light emanates from one of the people on the boardwalk. Gino pulls the window curtains closed. Exterior Atlantic City Boardwalk, night. An Albanian henchman using the binoculars watches the curtains of Gino's room get pulled closed. Other henchmen are around using long overcoats to hide their machine guns. Hugh steps out of a dinghy tied to a pier jetting out from the boardwalk, approaches the henchmen. They just closed the curtains. They must know we're here. Youth talks into a walkie-talkie. Status? Exterior, Casino Bel Air, loading dock entrance, night. A dozen Albanians guard the door. In position? Exterior, Casino Bel Air, street entrance, night. A dozen Albanians here, too. In position. Exterior, Casino Bel Air, boardwalk entrance, night. In position. Exterior, Atlantic City boardwalk, night. That's okay, we're good. Interior, Casino Bel Air, suite living room, night. The door opens. Gino and Carmine turn, draw their guns. Clams, Babu, and Columbo draw theirs as they enter. Whoa! We're surrounded. We know. You can't stay in this room. You're completely cornered here. Well, where do we take Joe? The casino floor. Are you crazy? It's out in the open. These men are going to storm this building. There is only one exit from this floor, <coughs> and we're 20 stories up. There are four exits on the casino floor. We've got to play the odds. Okay, let's move. Interior Casino Bel Air, corridor night. Joey and Gino walk, surrounded by Clams, Babu, Carmine Jr., and the other four Dons, and about two dozen Italian henchmen, the Italian Army. Interior Casino Bel Air, hotel lobby night. Three elevators open simultaneously, and the Italian Army gets out, surrounding the Ranos and marching toward the <coughs> interior Casino Bel Air, casino floor at night. A jam-packed plethora of table games, craps, blackjack, roulette, and dozens of rows of loudly clanging slot machines. Jackpots are being won, sirens glare, and people cheer. The place is an assault on the census. The Italian army walks along and is greeted by two dozen more Italian reinforcements. Every one of these men has a handgun. Genovese, take your men to the east entrance. Uh, Lucchese, the west. Bonanno, the loading dock. Colombo, the boardwalk. Hold your positions. We will surround Joey in here in case they send someone in for a stealth hit. Colombo called the police from upstairs and reported suspicious activity. When they get here, it'll drive the Albanians out at least one of their positions, opening up an exit. Call us when it happens and we'll make our move to get out. Good luck, man. And with that, they head to their positions. Interior, Casino Bel Air, street entrance night. The Italians dig in. Through the glass, they can see the Albanians doing the same. Exterior, Casino Bel Air, boardwalk entrance night. The Albanians watch carefully as Colombo and, and his men position themselves. Interior, Casino Bel Air, Casino Floor, Slot Pit Night. Players are playing slot arms and pressing buttons. There are oblivious gamblers everywhere, and the Maselli crime family stands among them, watching in all directions. And in the middle of it all, Joey and Gino Leno. I'm sorry, Dad. Gino looks at Joey. Joey's tears and somber face are genuinely regretful. This penetrates Gino. He searches for the right thing to say and settles on. Me too. I'm gonna die tonight, aren't I? Gino looks at him deeply, puts a hand on him and can only tell the truth. Tries not to sob. Not without me. Exterior, Atlantic City Boardwalk Night. Yuke and his man continue the standoff. Police sirens blare in the distance, drawing nearer. Yuke hears them, realizes what that means. Those fucking rats. Interior, Sons of the Eagle Boat, Cabin Night. Illo's phone rings. He answers. They called the police. There is no shame anymore. These are the people we are dealing with. They're closing in. We have an arsenal out here. We must retreat. Jack Maria is close enough for me to taste. It's our only play, Iliot. Illo thinks about this and stands up. Looks at the large window at the casino on the shore. The sound of the police sirens goes loud through the phone. In a burst of rage, he overturns the table and punches the wall. He looks at Valbona, who watches him, stunned at Illo's rare loss of gojure. Put Yuke on! We have responsibilities, Illo. Put Yuke on! Hamdi does. Yes? Illo grips the phone with all his might. Nephew, I turn you loose. Interior, Casino Bel Air, Casino Floor at night. Without warning, the attack comes from all sides at once. The Albanians storm all exit with a fury of machine gun fire. Civilians scream and scatter as felt-covered tables explode into splinters, sending multicolored chips into the air in every direction. The Albanian 
Our army converges on the floor, firing consistently from every direction, cutting people down. The Italian families are no match, completely overwhelmed as they absorb bullets with their heads and torsos, bodies flying everywhere. Interior, Casino Bel Air, Casino Floor, Slot Pit. The Vaselis fire back at the enemy, surrounding them quickly. They duck behind slot machines. Babu is shot in the throat, blood spews as he gurgles and collapses to die. Clams has it easier. A bullet hits his shoulder. Exterior, Casino Bel Air, street entrance night. Police cars pull up as people stream from the building. Dozens of police officers enter, guns blazing. Interior, Casino Bel Air, Casino Floor, night. And now it is the Albanians getting surrounded as police fire at them from behind and Italians from the front. Complete anarchy. And in the heart of the gunfight, Yuke and Hamdi remain side by side, punching through and moving toward the slot pit. Yuke sees the rattles through the chaos. Interior, Casino Bel Air, Casino Floor, Slot Pit Night. Hamdi and Yuke enter the maze of slots, keeping their heads so low they can't be seen. Joey and Gino do the same. Machine gun fire rips through the slot machine, sending glass and electronics all over the floor. Interior, Casino Bel Air, Casino Floor, Night. As the insane crossfire of bullets continues to cut down the assailants, Many Albanians and Italians begin retreating. The police continue to arrive in greater numbers. Interior, Casino Bel Air, Casino Floor, Slot Pit, Night. No civilians left, just some bodies and alarms blaring as the gunfight everywhere seems to be winding down. Gino and Joey stay low, due to Yuke and Handy. The enemies stalk one another across adjacent slot aisles. Interior, Casino Bel Air, Slot Pit, Yuke's aisle continuous. Yuke focuses. Listens to the sound of glass crunching on the other side of the slot machines. Cocks his weapon. Interior, Casino Bel Air, slot pit, Gino's aisle continuous. Gino hears Yuke's weapon. Shushes Joey. They hunch down to the ground, close to the machines. Gino gestures for Joey to go to the end of the aisle. Joey does so, crawling. Interior, Casino Bel Air, slot pit, Yuke's aisle continuous. Yuke looks up to the ceiling, sees the shattered mirrors that were once decorative. In the reflection, he can see Gino on the other side of the slot. Interior, Casino Bel Air, slot pit, Gino's aisle continuous. Gino gestures to Joey. One, two, three. Joey moves into Yuke's aisle and begins firing, taking out Hamdi's kneecaps. Gino, at the same time, jumps on top of the slots and tries to fire down on Yuke. But before he can, Yuke thrusts his body against the slots and tips them over, smashing down on Gino, crushing him. Blood oozes from his mouth instantly. Joey fires at Yuke but misses. Yuke, like a nimble cat, rolls behind another slot machine and plop, pops out fire to one shot into Joey's stomach. Bang. Joey drops. Police are converging. Joey's POV. Yuke, staying low, runs over to Joey's body. This is the last thing Gino sees before losing consciousness. His eyes flutter and the wailing sirens fade. Fade to black. Fade in. Interior. Casino Bel Air. Kitchen. Night. Gino comes to. He is sitting on the floor, leaning back against the deli counter. He takes in his surrounding. Stored food everywhere, oven, sinks, a deli slicer near to him, and next to that sits Hamdi, tied to a wheelchair and gagged with duct tape. On the other side of the room, Carmine Maselli Jr. and the heads of the other families and a handful of button men. The police right now are more interested in the Albanians because of the automatic weapons and the civilian death toll. They'll give us a headache eventually, but right now they're lumping us in with the victims. We lost a lot of men today. I take full responsibility for this. I will take it into consideration when dividing up future incomes. You have my sincerest apologies. Gino stands, groggily. Where's my son? Your son's dead, Gino. I'm sorry. We lost. Gino is overstricken with grief. His body. They took it. So they can dismember it, disrespect it. It's part of their barbaric culture. I, I saw him shot in the stomach. He may still be alive. They took him, Gino. He's dead by now. And if not, it's him and... I have to keep trying. Carmine Jr. puts a consoling hand on Gino. It's over, Gino. I will not give up on my son. Gino turns and approaches Hamdi, pulls the duct tape from his mouth. Where did they take him? Holy fuck what I know! Gino kicks Hamdi's shattered knees. He screams and writhes in pain. You're gonna die in this room. The only question is how bad it's gonna be for you until that happens. Handy turns his head, remains tight-lipped. Gino turns on the deli slicer, wheels Handy over to it. This one has been lost, Mr. Rano. Then leave me alone. The other men leave. Carmine approaches him. I've done all I can do, Gino. And I thank you for that, but I have to fight as long as there is a chance to save Joey. Be careful, Gino. 
You are playing with a loaded gun. So are they! Call it Vendetta, or Jack Mario, or Blood Feud, whatever. It's my blood, too! This is your war now, and yours alone. He extends his hand to Gino, they shake. I'm sorry for what my son has cost. Sangue magnetico. At all costs. You're doing the right thing. And Carmine leaves Gino alone with Hamdi in the deli slicer. Gino puts Hamdi's hand on the platform, crushes it with a meat grip. Hamdi grunts with pain. You think that hurts now? Last chance to tell me where they took him. No answer. Gino pushes the rolling tray and takes a slice out of Hamdi's hand. He freaks out. Now that's pain, my friend. Gino goes back to it. Slice, slice, slice. Hamdi wails louder with each one. Gino turns the blade motor off. He waits for Hamdi to calm a bit, then gets close to speak with him. My son did not kill Lake Marco. He swore it to me. It was your son. Stop this desperation, you kick ya. Gino thinks about this, wonders what to believe. Where did they take you? I must honor my visa. Your life is over. You can tell us whatever you want. The Marcos will never know. Stop this myth of Bazin and wise up. Your son's the murderer! Gino steps away, takes a deep breath, then lunges back at Hamdi, shoving his face down on the slicer. He squashes Hamdi's face with a meat grip and flips the blade motor on. No! You're gonna talk to me! Do you understand? You are gonna talk! Hamdi watches the razor-sharp blade spinning just inches from his face. Where is he? He waits. No answer. Then Gino does it. He pushes the rolling tray and takes a slice out of Hamdi's face. An inhuman scream from Hamdi, and Gino continues slicing. Slice, 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 until he's shaving Hamdi's cheek bone. Each pass sprays blood everywhere, and the sound of the bone slicing is much rougher than that of the flesh. Gino stops. Hamdi remains face down. Where is he? Gino lifts Hamdi's head, revealing the nutritious brown. Helios bone offshore! Gino takes his phone out. Call him. Tell him I want to talk. My son is innocent. He gave me his word. I will be without honor. Gino flips the blade, motor switch on again. I will keep slicing until you cooperate. In a flash, Hamdi uses his freed hand to grab the gun from Gino's hip and puts it to his own temple. Bisa! He blows his brains out. Blood erupts onto Gino. He backs up in disgust. Suddenly, his phone beeps, receiving a message. He checks it. Carmine Jr., police report attached. Gino clicks to open it and it scrolls a bit, then finds what he's looking for in bold letters. Cause of death, gunshot wound, left temple, 45 caliber. Then a text from Carmine. Point 45, Joey's gun. This kills Gino. He leans back in total shock and dies emotionally. He remains in this defeated pose for a moment, then a fire begins to burn in him again. He bolts from the room. Cut to exterior Atlantic City boardwalk at night. Police cars, ambulances, and flashing lights everywhere. Gino exits the Casino Bel Air, sees Iller's ship far out on the ocean, nearing the horizon. Along the pier, multiple police boats are haphazardly tied in response to the shootout. Exterior pier night. Gino runs along the pier, unties one of the police boats, and jumps in. Exterior police boat night. He turns on the engine and revs it up, full throttle in the direction of the Albanians. Interior Sons of the Eagle boat, cabin night. Joey is tied securely to a chair. His stomach has been cut open, revealing the bullet wound in his stomach. He is crying out in pain as Yuke is sticking his knife in the wound. Balbana watches. You see, Joey? You <coughs> couldn't get away with it. Do it again. Yuke sticks his knife in the wound again. Joey screams. Then he takes a canister of salt out of a cabinet and pours it on, agonizing pain for Joey. Iller enters, hanging up his phone. Hamdi is a casualty. He gave his life for this Jack Maria, a good man. Iller looks at Joey. So this is the Embaturina that destroyed my family. I want a lot of pictures taken of this. Everyone needs to see what happens. The henchman piloting the boat enters. Mr. Marku, we are being approached by the police. Bring him below deck. Cut the engine. Keep your weapons hidden, but ready. Exterior, sons of the Eagle Boat Knight. All hands on deck watching the police boat pull up and cut its engine. Gino steps out from the wheelhouse with his hands raised. It's the father. They all pull their guns. I'm unarmed. I wish to speak. They look to Illa for a response. Bring him aboard. Interior, sons of the Eagle Boat, cabin night. Illa and Gino are sitting at the table. Yuke and Balbona watch from seats nearby. Where's his body? His body is downstairs, still alive. For a fleeting moment, Gino is relieved and exhilarated. You, you can bring him up. You pulls off to do so. 
What are you going to do to him? Uh, we are going to cut his heart out, and likely his eyes and tongue before that. He swears he didn't kill your son. What he swears doesn't matter. I am here to offer my life to you so that my son might be spared. No. He was clouded by drugs. He never meant any harm to you or your family. I threw him out. I turned my back on him. If I hadn't done that, your son and grandson would still be alive. I am the guilty party. He's a victim too. Take your vengeance on me, please. This is a deal I cannot make. The killer dies. You may die with them if you wish, but I extend to you the opportunity to leave now. Joey is brought in by Yuke, thrown to his knees. He is bloodied and suffering greatly. From his knees, Joey looks up to Gino and Iller, his eyes swollen with bruises and tears. Iller opens the door of the cabin, leading to Gino's police boat. You may say goodbye first. That is an honor I give to you as a father. Gino looks at the police boat and gazes back at Joey, the toughest decision one could possibly make. He approaches Joey, stands before him, squats down, and kisses his cheek. Goodbye, Joey. Joey cries, and with that, Gino lowers himself to kneel beside Joey. He reaches out and holds Joey's hand, looks deeply into his eyes as Joey registers the magnitude of what Gino is doing. Every step, my son. Every step. They share one final broken-hearted smile, then they lower their heads for their final execution. Gino closes his eyes and whispers a prayer. Have mercy on him, Lord. Do you really think it is going to be over that easily for you? Bang! You shoots Gino in the stomach. Gino collapses. The spent shell casing jingling on the ground in front of him. Like father, like son. Give me the salt. Gino lies on the ground, his eyes focused on the spent shell casing as it rolls to stop in front of his face. He reaches out and picks it up, realizes something. You use a forty-five. Yuk is confused. Yes. You were standing on Leaky's left that night. So? Gino is gaining momentum. He takes out his phone with a police report. That's where the bullet came from, 45 caliber left temple. My son says he didn't shoot him. The other kid had a 9mm. It was you. Iller and Balbana listen. Your son's lying. No. He swore to me that he didn't do it. It had to be you. Enough of this. You shoot him. Wait. Mr. Marker was a father. Give me one final chance to save my son. A courtesy that was unfortunately not given to you. What do you intend? I have the police report right here. A photo of the spent shell casing matched to the bullet that killed your son. Allow me to compare it to the casing that just came from, fell from Yuki's gun. Leader, stop listening to the pleas of desperate men. Fulfill the Jack Maria. Miller uh, is hesitant. Allow me. You may, with your final action. This is ridiculous. Why would I kill my cousin? What would I have to gain? Valbona realizes. Everything. The whole Marku Empire. As long as my son was out of the picture. You can't possibly blame that on me. That was a tragedy brought upon by this kid's actions. And now Iller joins. You were already sick when I reached your room, before you even knew what happened. You were throwing up, and then you fainted. What did you eat and drink that night? We had a late doctor's appointment. I didn't have anything except the Rocky to celebrate in your office. Poured by him? Iller moves toward Yuke. We never had an insect problem in the garden. Never in 50 years. Gino has found what he was looking for in his phone. He holds up a photo of the firing pin indentation on the murderer's bullet. He holds up Yuke's shell casing. An exact match. A perfect match. That settles the death of my son. Now for my grandson, Mr. Rano. Tell me the side effects if one were to ingest a pesticide known as endosulfan. Gino checks his smartphone. I beg you, Axe, don't do this. Vomiting, loss of consciousness, miscarriage. Iller's fiery stare burns into Yuke's eyes. It was you. A silent stare off. Inserts. Exterior, 760 Pelham Parkway, rooftop, night of the shootout. As Joey and Beetle die behind the air conditioning unit, you turns and fires into Lee's temple. Leaky drops. Interior, Marco Estate, Iller's office, night of celebration. 
A different angle of view keep pouring the drinks. This time can be seen adding a liquid chemical to one glass. Back to Interior, Sons of the Eagle Boat, Cabin Night. Iller is one centimeter from Uke, staring eye to eye. Finally, Uke lowers his head. I'm sorry, Axie. Take him. Henchmen scurry over and do so. Uke does not put up a fight. Exterior, Sons of the Eagle Boat, Deck Night. Iller has seen Gino and Joey to the police boat. My deepest and most sincere apology to both of you. I am indebted to your family. As Gino and Joey step off the Iller's boat and onto the police boat. Mr. Rano. Gino turns to face Iller. Thank you, my friend. Gino nods, then takes his son to safety. Interior, Sons of the Eagle Boat, Cabin Night. Yuke is standing, but tied very tightly to a bulkhead, so tightly that he can't even wiggle. Henchmen look on. Valbona cries hysterically in the corner. Iller enters and hugs Valbona. Then he releases her and approaches Yuke. He picks up Yuke's large combat knife and uses it to point as he speaks. My Nipash, how should we kill you? The same way you killed my son with a single bullet to the brain? Strangle you? Drown you? Hang you? All of that is too easy. You can't kill me. If you do, your empire dies with you. Iller, normally confident, doesn't seem to have realized that. I'm all that's left. When you pass, the others will pick apart what you built like buzzards at a carcass. I must fulfill the Jack Maria. And you will destroy yourself, your empire. Iller struggles with this, puts the knife down on the table next to him. I have given my besa. And in doing so, you've sealed your fate. I won, uncle. I have put myself in the position to take over when you feel ready. And you have my besa. Then I will continue to run your family business with the same success you have for all these years. That is, if your besa doesn't cause you to kill me first. Iller is at his breaking point. He thinks this over. The henchmen watch intently. For the first time, Iller doesn't know what to do. Finally, Iller comes up with something. There is not a man here tonight that would not gladly snuff the light from your eyes. No, Yuk. Your blood will not shame me or any of the, of the men in this room because it is rancid. You desecrated our blood in front of the whole world. And every mountain and valley will know of what you have done. No Albanian will look in your direction, for you walk the earth alone now. If your father were alive, I know he would beg someone to shoot you dead here and now, because you are indeed dead already. Your spirit is dead. Take him to the place where he killed my son. Strip him of his money and his property. I will take over the business and give that to the someone more deserving. Give everything else he owns away to the less fortunate of our clansmen. Then leave him to walk the earth alone. Iller walks by and looks out the window at the dark ocean passing by. You have made a mistake, Uncle. Iller puts his arm around Valbana and begins walking her out. She's so weak she can hardly stand. She hangs on him. Valbana? She looks at him with disgust. Talk some sense into him. Valbana releases Iller and approaches Yuke. Seemingly gaining strength as she draws closer, she gets very close to him. Doesn't have to end this way. She stares at him deeply as she slaps him and spits in his face. With no hand to wipe the spit away, he just deals with it dangling from his cheek and nose. That's for my husband. A million times the man you are. You looks away from her. Her eyes lock into him, the fires of hell seeming to well up inside her. In a flash, she grabs the combat knife and plunges it into his chest, screaming. Ah! Yuke's eyes bulge and his mouth opens in a vomitous way. And that's for my son, Agron, whose light will forever shine from heaven. And with that, her fire is gone, extinguished by a river of tears. She hangs from the knife sticking from Yuke's chest. She releases it and collapses into Iller. Iller stands before Yuke and watches him die. When the gurgling finally stops and Yuke's head dips. Take his head from his shoulders. Drop it into a garbage dump in Queens. Remove his hands, and they will be sent to his family in Albania. The rest, throw overboard for the fish to feast upon. Exterior ocean night. The water is even darker than the sky. Iller's boat 
is the lone light in the darkness. Dissolve to interior Gino Rano's home, kitchen, morning. A dark black cooking pan. Some eggs are poured into it and begin to sizzle. Joey is cooking. Gino enters. Morning, Pop. You're up early. <laughs> Got a meeting today. I'm proud. Joey smiles. Get used to it. Now Gino smiles. Cut to interior Marco's estate, Balbana's bedroom, morning. Balbana is sitting at her vanity applying cover-up to the scratches on her cheek. She takes a curling iron and styles her hair beautifully. Her door opens and Mrs. Marco leans in. Breakfast, dear. Thank you. She gets up and exit with Mrs. Marku, walking past the ultrasound image of Agron, hanging proudly back on the wall. Cut to exterior diner day. Carmine Maselli Jr. is standing out front. Gino pulls up and they greet one another and enter the diner. As they enter, Gino notices two toddlers sitting on stools, eating ices by the front door. He smiles at them, tosses their hair as he passes to walk in. Interior, diner, continuous. Carmine Jr. and Gino approach a table where the other four Dons are sitting with clams. The Dons stand, and there are plenty of hello hugs and kisses. They all stop and stare at the door at Iller and Pashku as they enter. The two Albanians approach and join the Italians sitting at their table. A waiter brings coffee and cookies on the table. I'd like to thank you all for coming today. There's a lot of business to discuss in the wake of our unproductive war and the financial and personal casualties that have been a result of it. I am here today to tell you that we are taking responsibility for this clash. Your words are sincere, Iller. We accept your apology, but more is needed as the damages were done to my family and other families at this table. I know I can be too direct at times, but that's my style, so understand that no insult is intended. We agree, Carmine. If we're looking to be friends for the future, then reasonable restitution should be made. Is it a cash settlement you have in mind? I must be honest, gentlemen. For years, our business has suffered as some of your, shall we say, ambitious people took bits of our core business from us. We have looked the other way, but this war your family brought to us has opened our eyes. Understandable. We're offering $30 million in full restitution for this misunderstanding. Mr. Marcou, that offer could only be viewed as a down payment for what the families require at this point. My casino problem has cost more than that. So what are you suggesting, Carmen? Five million a month, one million per family for the first two years. Payable directly to the Micellis, who will distribute accordingly. Then one million a month for the Micellis for three years. A payback for our losses over a five-year period is a bargain. An expensive bargain, don't you think? As opposed to? Alternatively, we take back what was taken away from us over the past 30 years. The numbers, the loans, and the street power that now comes in heavy to you from Detroit and Canada. Mr. Marcou, you know the numbers. This is a bargain you can afford. I thought we were here to put an end to the war. Not start a new one. Yes, unless you have a better offer. And one more thing Gino failed to mention, no more taking over our positions anywhere in New York City. If you want something, then an offer to buy must be made. We will pay the sum of money annually as you, uh, as you requested. I do believe that we need to pay for our mistakes, and I was blinded with rage. I was wrong, and we will pay. Thank you. And the rest of our proposal, Don Marku? For us to roll back our business to a time when we were trying to get a foothold here would be devastating to us both, financially and emotionally. If I agree to what you are asking, we will not be able to pay the restitution <coughs> that we accept and that you rightfully deserve. Moreover, the spirit of our people, the Shigabataret, the sons of the eagle, would be broken. That will destroy any peace that we hoped for. If you take away a man's pride, you destroy the man, Carmine. I propose that we all work in harmony. Each family keeps what, is work, what, <clears throat> what it is worked for when we join forces. No longer fighting, but strengthening. Gino removes his ring. 
places it in the middle, in the center of the table. Italian and Albanian working together. Ailer places his ring in the center as well. One by one, the other dogs place their rings in the center of the table. May we show each other the same respect we've shown for our families. Together we will rise. Two waiters approach on either side of the table. Suddenly, blood explodes from Pashko's head. The waiters have opened fire with assault rifles. Iller is hit in the shoulder. Genovese is hit in the head. Carmen is hit in the chest. The others dive from the table as it overturns. The two waiters run for the door where a van has pulled up. The toddler guards are hiding under their stools. Two more men get out of the van and spray machine gun bullets into the diner. They shout in Russian to one another, then hop into the van and speed off. Gino crawls over to Carmine Jr., who is clinging to life. What the fuck was that? Russians. You will take over the Maselli family, Gino. They are your enemy now. When does this end? When we close our eyes, my old friend. Until then, it's just all different stages of all fucked up. Carmine Jr. breathes his last breath. Gino stands. The remaining survivors stand as well. Columbo, Clams, and Iller. The Russians will pay with their lives. If not, they won't stop until we're wiped out. I'm with you in this. Until the last dog dies. Remember, Gino, as we say, preparation and fate are brothers. La Vendetta and Jack Maria shall be fulfilled. Mr. Marco, you have my visa. The men begin moving, picking up their belongings. On the ground, in a deep puddle of blood, is Ilar Marcus' ring, with the imprint of the double-headed eagle over a red stone. It is leaning against Gino's Sicilian-shaped ring. The rings sparkle brightly together. The black shoe steps in front of them, filling the frame with full-screen darkens. The end.